Hey YouTube, welcome to another video. It's been quite a while since I last uploaded the video, so apologies to all my subscribers. I also want to apologize for not being able to reply as quickly as possible to any questions posted on my channel. For this episode, I will start with a quick unboxing of the Pinning Omada ER7406. I got this gateway for almost 4 months now, and I'm only now getting to unbox this for the very first time. So as not to waste your time, if you only want to hear my opinion of the product, I will not hold you much longer. I really do want you to watch the whole video because it really helps my channel by telling the YouTube algorithm that it's good. Anyway, my verdict for this product, it is decent and really good, but also do skip this particular product, don't buy it, and just get an ER707-M2 or something similar. If you want to know why or you want to see the physical device or just want to watch the video to support me, feel free to hang around. And by the way, if you like the video, please like, subscribe to my channel as well as click that notification bell because it really does help the channel. what's in the box installation guide some licensing information else? another licensing information and there's another box in here So it contains the power cable and mounting mounting rails as well as some screws and some rubber feet. As for the product itself, it's wrapped in naturally this is an anti-stack plastic, but it's wrapped in plastic. It's quite wide than the ER605, definitely. So let me just flip the camera towards the other devices. So this is an OC300. Looks like it's the same dimension. I'll put the dimension on the screen. It's got one, two, three, four, five RGA45 ports. They are all just gigabit. None of this is more than one gigabit per second port. All of them are just one gigabit, even the SFP port. It has at least one wide area network port, but I believe all of them can be a LAN port, but except for this one port. It has air vent in here. This is where the power supply is plugged in. Security lock, mounting holes, and yeah. This is the specs from the websites. This is a side-to-side -side comparison of all three devices in here, the ER7406, ER7206, and ER605. I added ER605 just for references, but the ER7406, when I look at the specs, it's really evenly matched with an ER7206. I will post the link of this side-by-side -side comparison in the description. The ER7206 is using a power brick. However, this one, the power supply is directly connected to the bat. When I look at the specs and review all the specs in here, the speed, processing, and everything is similar, if not exactly the same as ER7206. So let's just look for one specs, for example. For the interface, one gigabit SFP, one LAN port, one gigabit, one port, 4 gigabit LAN 1 ports, 1 USB 3.0 port for LTE dongle and storage as well, exactly the same. For the network media, it's exactly the same again. And this is the difference of the two devices. ER7406 is using a direct power cable attachment to the device itself, while the ER7206 is using a 12 volt DC 1 amp power adapter. Same flash same DRAM the dimension is different the power consumption is 7.5 watts 7.5 watts 4.5 watts 4.5 watts so it's exactly the same for the performance it's close 
for the GRE, the ES7206 is running a full gigabit speed for unencrypted GRE. For the encrypted, it's running at 702, while the ER7406 is just running 611 unencrypted and 325 Mbps for the encrypted. For the wireless, it's exactly the same, same thing for ABS Lupa, DVI, exactly the same, performance settings, exactly the same, 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 performance, double TV, exactly the same, performance, double interface, between the interface, and the interface. For the advanced features, exactly the same as more, quite a bit of the RP and OSCS, both available only in standard mode, so that means it only works in standard mode. And this is going to hold the information here, I'm just saying, 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 I'm just and just get an ER707 or if you don't need 2.5 gigabits per second wide area network uplink then you can opt for an ER7206 another reason why you need to skip this device is because this is already end of life so you can see here ER7406 version 1.0 1.6 and 1.26 you can see the notification in here and even if I go here to the website itself ER7406 is end of life. So this will be the lab setup. This is how I'm going to set up the ER7406 for the very first time. This is an out of the box setup. One thing I would like to emphasize in this diagram is that this is not a typical out of the box setup. And the reason why I say that is because the controller, in this particular case, a hardware controller, an OC300, is in the wide area network my gateway is actually connected to the wide area network it has internet access and it will access the controller that is on my private cloud as you can see the ip address here is a private ip the same thing in here the gateway is using the default ip address which is 192.168.0.1 and my media pc this pc that i'm using for recording will be connected directly to the LAN port. There will be no switch, no hub, and no other device except my PC and this gateway, and then the gateway connecting to the cloud. Again, this is my private cloud, and then it will reach to the OC300 or to a hardware controller. So the controller can be a software or hardware controller, doesn't really matter. And there are three options to set it up in this particular manner one of the option is not recommended the first one is the umoda discovery utility i already have a video that covers this one so this is highly recommended if you're new to umada but in this video what i'm going to do is do a web console configuration so this video this particular video i will do a web console configuration and the third option is lan swapping which i do not recommend it just means that I will need to move my ER7406 in the same IP network as the hardware controller. But that will require more configuration on this particular gateway. So I chose not to do that. So for the physical connectivity, it's very similar to the way this one is being shown. Meaning there is one cable connected to the wide area network and there's one cable connected to the local area network which is my home PC. So let me switch back to the device camera so I can show how the device is physically connected. This is the ER7406. As you can see, there's actually one cable connecting to the wide area network port of this particular device. You can ignore all the rest of the other devices in this stack. For now, for this video, the only thing we're only concerned about is the ER7406. Again, as I mentioned, there's only one wide area network uplink, and it's already connected in here, and the rest of the ports are empty. So for Omata gateways, typically the leftmost RJ45 is a wide area network port, and the rightmost, which I'm going to use this one, is almost always a LAN port. As for my client PC, this will be my client PC as denoted by this orange colored tape. So I'm going to move this to here. I want to show how it looks as well on the admin PC so that you will have an idea that I'm already changing my PC from this network to this network. So now that I'm back on my computer, let me see my IT network right now, checking it. I'm currently 
on 10.0.0.100 IP network and I'm going to ping 192.168.100.100 so this is my current adapter and if you're looking at the main screen this is my computer so if I remove this one you can see that the cable is unplugged so let me just put it back again there we go so what I'm going to do is do a consistent ping on the hardware controller go I'm going to remove this here okay, as you can see on my mini screen the cable is currently disconnected and it says request time bout and general failure and you can also see the status of my adapter in here as being X or disconnected so, this is uh, my ER7406 so if you're looking at the mini screen I'm going to connect my desktop into one of the LAN ports there you go connected it and as you can see I can reach my hardware controller from here 192.168.100.100 because my OC300 is in the wide area network now let's check my IP address so let me just control break this one so my IP address shouldn't be in the 10 network anymore I'm currently in the 192.168.0.100 this one let me switch back to the Umada console. Since I can still access 192.168.100.100, that means I still have access to my Umada controller. I am now in my Umada console, and the ER7406 is not currently showing up in here. A fair warning, I have recently updated my Umada software controller to the latest one, and I'm not really very familiar with the new UI, so you might see me fumble from time to time. I'm just hoping that there's not much changes when it comes to adapting. The general idea will be the same and I will also put the summary of the steps on the screen as I go through along with the process. Um, let me just go to the dashboard and in the dashboards if you have multiple sites you can see all the multiple sites in here and in my lab I normally just have a template for the site which contains all the default settings that I would like to have on my newly set up on my other side and you can see here it's a gateway template but assuming you don't have anything something like this and you would like to follow to the steps what you need to do is click this button in here add new site so let me click this one add new site and I'm going to create a new site to house the ER7406 I'll just call it simply ER7406 the site tag is optional select your country select your time zone I normally select this one for my devices I don't really select the easy manage one for the application scenario you can see that there is a drop down in here and you can select the one that fits your scenario for this particular video I'll just use home and for the device account I'll just select admin and for the password one thing I notice here is that my usual lab password doesn't work anymore so for example I use password one plus and if I press tab or click apply it will not allow me just because it contains the word password I think but what I can do is just say quick brown fox one plus this time around it's accepted so hopefully this one will be remembered let me just paste it in there in case I kind of forgot this one and address I don't need to have an address and then click apply okay. so let me just connect to the web console of the Umada gateway so this is the ER7406 console I'll just click advance and then proceed this is the Umada console and password I believe I let let me set up this password here so I just copy pasted this one and then confirm there we go admin and then password again login 
for this device to be able to see the gateway I have to go to the controller IP settings so let me just go to system tools controller settings and I need to set up the inform URL there you go it should be 192.168.100.100 I'll click save now at this particular step the Imada controller is supposed to be able to see this device and I should be able to adapt it okay, so let me go to the controller now go here and let me go to devices and there you go you can see this one is saying it's pending the model is ER7406 so that's why we know this is the exact same device that we are going to adapt and this has been up for 11 hours and 31 minutes again if I compare it here if I go to status system status 11 hours and 31 minutes and this is the build firmware versions and everything we are 7406 and let me go back here I can start adapting this once I adapt this this console will kick me out because now I'm going to operate and configure this ER7406 in controller mode right now this is in standalone mode but I'm going to do a controller mode now for this particular gateway so let me just adapt it so it says here failed to adapt because I believe the controller is using the default username and password but because we already have configured this with a different username and password it will fail all you have to do is just click retry and you will be able to enter the username and password for this particular device which is admin and then I need to paste it again in here and you will see that the password will be the quick brown fox one plus and then click adapt this one should proceed without any issues anymore there you go it's provisioning and then now it's connected so let me go back to the standalone console I will refresh the page and I should be kicked out from here I am already kicked out so and let me try logging in here admin password and it will say here that it's a, there is a server error it's forbidden because this one is already running in controller mode go I'll just click log out yes making sure it's clear and in here you will see the note that this gateway is being managed by Umada controller at this particular IP meaning I should be managing this device on the Umada controller rather than from its web console so let me just refresh this screen I should be able to see myself as a client in here now if everything works as expected oh it's currently configuring let me look at the clients just checking if this admin pc is already showing up the 192.168.0.100 let me just check it's not yet showing up but that's okay let me just click back to oh it's now connected and then when i click clients again now it shows my media pc this pc is connected and it's been up for two minutes and there you go that's how you adapt the the gateway it's pretty much very easy very straightforward i think that's pretty much it for this video if you like this video please like the video if you don't like the video please dislike the video but do let me know what you like on this video and if you have any questions pending that i have missed to reply on my previous videos or anywhere on my channel do put it back on this particular video and i'll make sure i'll reply as soon as i can thank you again for watching my video I'll see you on my next one. Thank you and bye-bye.